Hello everyone, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn how to deploy any application on AWS EC2 instance. So let's get started. Before we move forward, you will need few things. First, you need an account on AWS so that we can create the instance and deploy the application on it. Then you will need account with GitHub so that we can push the code on github pull the code on aws ec2 instance and then deploy the application if you are on windows then you will need to download this putty so that you can have ssh connection between aws ec2 instance and your local machine if you are on mac or linux there is inbuilt ssh tool Finally, you need Docker installed on your local machine cause we are going to use Docker so that we can very easily deploy the application on AWS EC2 instance. If you don't have any prior experience with Docker, then I suggest you to use any vibe coding tool. Here I'm using Claude to generate a Docker file so that I can run it on my server. Once you have everything, the AWS account, GitHub account, downloaded putty, installed Docker and you have your Docker file ready, we can then move to the local testing part. It is always good practice to test the application locally and then replicate the same things on a server. So here I am on a terminal and I have a telegram bot written in TypeScript. You can see I have a docker compose file and a docker file. This application needs a database and that is why I have a docker compose file. Let's look into the docker compose file with a cat command. So you can see I have a couple of services. This is one docker file. This is another docker file. So you consider docker compose file is a combination of docker files and runs multiple docker files at the same time in order to make sure that the application is running locally i'll say docker space compose space up this will spin up the docker compose file and run all the docker files written inside it so i'll hit enter you will see that first it will pull the postgres image and run it after that it will run my own application this one because it depends on postgres you will see that first the postgres instance is running and then my application i would like to show you what my application does it is a telegram boot so when i hit start we will receive message from the telegram application that i have built i can add habit into this like it will then you know send me reminders that did you do meditation today i can then check in for today that i have done the habit like this and this telegram board sends reminders every day and so summary weekly of my habits my application is running okay locally i'll go to aws make sure you select the region nearest to you from this drop down then you can search for ec2 here or maybe ec2 on your console home as well you can go to ec2 then there will be launch instance button click on that give your instance a name that you can identify it with i'll say habit telegram boot then down here there are different versions of linux available even windows as well that you can run on the server i'll go with amazon linux then it will ask for the instance type i'll go with 
T2 micro, you can change it depending on the requirement. Then it will ask to generate a key pair set so that we can log in into the instance. So I'll click on create new key pair. I'll give a name telegram boot. Click RSA, click dot PAM file. In case you are on Windows and you are going to use PuTTY, then select PPK. But since I am on Linux, I'll choose PAM file and hit create key. It will download a PAM file. Then you don't have to do anything here in the SSH part. Under configure storage, I'll just change the storage to 32 gigabytes and from this button i'll launch the instance it will take couple of seconds to launch the instance after copying this public ip4 address i'll go to my terminal and open a new terminal here I will navigate to the folder where we have downloaded the PPK or PAM file. Here is my PAM file. What I'll do is that for Linux and Mac OS, SSH EC2 EC2 hyphen user at the rate the public address. Now, if you are on PuTTY, I am not able to show you how you can connect to your EC2 instance, but you can, you know, very easily search for a tutorial which can help you do that. But for Linux and Mac, this will work. So I'll hit enter. It will ask me to add this fingerprint permanently on my machine. I'll say yes. But you will see that. It says permission denied because we just recently launched an instance and we don't want anyone with the access to the public IP to connect to the instance. That is why we have this PAM file. So I'll say SSH into the machine, but use the PAM file and I'll hit enter. You'll see that still we are unable to login into the ec2 instance because the permission is 0664 so that we need to change the permission to 0400 i'll say telegram boot pam file and i'd hit enter now if i try to log in into the ec2 instance hopefully we are able to log in into the ec2 instance let me clear the screen the first thing we need to do is we need to check if docker is installed or not. I already have information about how to install docker on your AWS instance. So I'll copy the commands and paste it here. It will take few amount of time to install docker on my AWS EC2 instance. You can get the commands I have used here to install docker from the github repository and the link of it is in the description of the video. I'll just make sure that docker is installed and indeed docker is installed. Now we are ready to deploy the application on the server but if I look here you'll see there is no code. So the problem now is to push the code on AWS EC2 instance. There are two ways with which we can push the code on AWS EC2 instance. The first way is to use GitHub, push the code on GitHub and then pull the code on AWS EC2 instance. So we are going to do that. So I am on this EC2 instance and I'll run a command ssh keygen hyphen t ed2519 hyphen capital c and then i'll provide my email address 
associated with my github account that i have access with make sure you use the same github account email that you have used to push the code on github once i do that it will ask me to enter where you want to save this file i'll keep the default by entering and enter one more time for empty password and one more time you'll see that it has generated ssh key and i can view the ssh key doing this dot pub and this is the ssh key now with this ssh key when we send request from this instance to github to pull the code github will verify this and provide the response so i'll copy this now i'll go to my github from my account go to settings under ssh and gpg keys i'll add new ssh key i'll say test aws ec2 and i'll paste the code here and i'll click on add ssh key since i have authentication enabled on my machine it will ask to verify with authentication code so i'll do it very quickly now you can see the ssh key is added on my github account i'll go to my terminal where i have the instance running i'll clear the screen go to github again and go to my repositories and i'll select the repository on which i want to work i'll select that and from this code section i'll copy the github repository link and come back to the instance terminal one more time and i'll say git clone and i'll paste the repository you will see it will clone the repository on the aws ec2 instance and if i say ls you will see a repository and i can cd into it and see all the code here so it seems that we have pushed the code from github to our aws ec2 instance there is another way to push the code on aws ec2 instance let's say you have a case where you are working on client's aws account and you don't want to put ssh key on aws ec2 instance in that case you can download an application called filezilla you can go to this new site option and then add a new site i'll say test aws ec2 and hit enter here from the protocol i'll select ssh file transfer the port number is 22 here i'll paste the host then for login type i'll say key file user is ec2 hyphen user in case you have chosen ubuntu operating system the username is ubuntu and then from here i'll select the file make sure i select the pem file and this is my pem file and i'll hit ok and from this drop down i'll select the connection type again say ok and you will see that i have now all the directories what i'll do is that the left side is my local directory from here i'll copy the things that i want to copy and then create a new folder here let's say test hyphen dir hit enter and then upload everything there you can see it is done now i can again go to the instance terminal cd dot dot from the youtube folder and when i do ls you'll see i have test directory as well and if i cd into it and do ls you will see we have all the information same as it is now what i'll do is that i'll cd out and cd into my youtube folder and do ls 
even ls hyphen a for all dot files you will see that i don't have a dot env file i need a dot env file for that i'll use nano to create my dot env file i'll say nano space dot env in a hit enter it will open a kind of terminal and here i'll paste my dot env file content i'll paste the content here once the content is there you can use control s to save the content and control x to exit the file and let's verify using cat command that the content is there yes the content is there once everything is set up now we can run the docker compose command i'll say docker compose up and hit enter it seems that there is an issue with the docker installation i'll very quickly install docker and docker compose as well finally i am able to run docker compose on my machine so i'll say docker compose up this command can be different for your application and when i hit enter it will first pull the postgres image and then build my application it seems that i am facing one more issue saying that the pnpm log file is absent and the reason is that i haven't pushed that so i'll very quickly push on the server sync the changes once the changes are done what i can do is that from the folder itself let me clear the screen first from the folder itself i can say git pull and it will pull the information and you can see that two files are changed and now i can run the docker compose up this time hopefully it will run the application my application is running on the server now let's test it on telegram itself so i'll say start command and hopefully yeah we receive the information i'll add a new habit here i'll say meditate for 30 minutes hit enter and let me check in if everything works well so it seems that the application is working fine so i'll stop this and i can then provide a hyphen d tag that means in daemon mode and when i do that everything will work as it is but in the daemon mode so that i can close this off so i hope that you have gained substantial amount of knowledge about how to deploy your own application on aws ec2 instance i am sure there may be some glitches that you need to take care while you deploy your application on the aws ec2 instance i think this is it from my side if you like the content i put on my youtube channel then please consider to subscribing my youtube channel that helps thank you for watching enjoy the life peace